Welcome back to Japan, where we've got a reaction and review today to Babysitter with Calendar. Now, as always, you know how this works. If you want to see the reaction, I've just done it, and you can watch the song with me by pausing this video, clicking the link in the description below, which will open up a separate YouTube player where you can see the reaction. Sorry, just the way we've got to do things now. Nothing I can do about that. Anyway, please watch that, and if you've already seen the song and want to see the review, that's what you're about to get. Here comes the review. Have you seen the reaction? Have you seen the song? Have you got everything you need to know until you listen to it before you listen to a review? Because here comes the review. Don't say I didn't warn you. Now it, here it is. So this song was, uh, I, gave, I kind of gave away a lot of my main feelings and conclusions during the song because it quite it hits you quite hard with what its core values are. First and foremost, it cannot be denied that the the band are just sort of oozing with musical quality. It's playful. It has that sort of uh, jumpy, funky, jazzy vibe that some of these sorts of uh, th this style of band has in Japan, where you can't help but listen to it and just feel like um, like they're having fun. But at the same time, they're crafting the song really well. Now, what I noticed here is it had a, a similar vibe, referencing a solo artist here, but it reminded me a lot of Aiko, who obviously, really big name in Japan, didn't so much break out of Japan, but she was one of the... I would say progenitors of this style, I think that's the right word, of this style of sort of jazzy, um, jazzy, high speed, funky pop, you know, where every instrument is, uh, sounds very live, everything sounds very real, and everything's got a sort of frenetic, high speed, funky quality. Um, it sounds like uh, almost uh, amongst other things that this owes a bit of a debt of uh, style to that sort of Ico sound. And this hit a lot of the best points of what I would reference from you know, years of having heard her music, uh, in that it was, like I say, it was a sense, first of all, of playfulness, but it's also a sense that there was a real purpose to it. Um, you know, the chorus, for example, didn't just loop round and round and round. It went through two fairly long chord progressions before having a final section that wraps it up. You know, the verses were nice and interesting. They had little uh, different changes in them, in the rhythm. Uh, I liked how they brought, brought in that distortion thing. That was actually not a very Ico thing to do. She always, I think her voice is always like zero production. But it was that distortion effect was really nicely chosen. It was not something I would have expected, not something that would have come to mind when you're producing a band like this. But it added a really nice contrast. So when it came in, it felt like it was really accenting certain lines, really giving a, uh, a, a certain power to certain parts of it. Um, the musicianship was you know, non-stop. Uh, the guitarist, particularly, lots of little licks and things. The drummer was really, really on it. You know, fills everywhere, and the bassist as well, especially in the bridge. You know, really nice choices on the bass. Uh, I felt that this was a sort of song where, like I say, everything was go all the time, and yet it was strangely subtle as well, which is another quality of these kinds of bands. That, like I say, uh, uh, Aiko is probably the most, uh, although a solo artist, she's probably the most. Uh, predominant and well-recognized figure in this style of uh, music in in Japan at least uh, and so you know when I was listening to this I you know I just felt like my ears were being feasted to constantly there was so much to take in and that's always a great feeling now I did also allude to what I think may be the um the the issue although you know, I say that in quotation marks the issue that some people might have. Now, assuming that this is a style of music that you find palatable, and I think most people can if they just sort of like chill out and want to listen to something which is just engaging, I think they can. Um, I can understand that maybe the points would be held against this. Maybe some people would find this to be a little bit too frenetic. You know, it never quite settles into a groove because it's always, you know, there's always so much, like so many drum fills going on, so many uh, changes going on. It doesn't quite settle into any settle into a rhythm, perhaps. I think that's where it leans more towards a jazz feel. I think that's where the sort of jazzy uh, contemporary quality comes into it, and that it feels, uh, although you can hear the format, we can hear the verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, chorus, you know, standard 60s rock and roll uh, <laughs> uh, theory is still alive in this. The fact that it always feels like it's... Um, always sort of on its toes is a more jazzy quality it feels although i'm sure it's written it feels almost improvised so i can see that some people would find that a little bit of a turn off and i do accept as well that it doesn't have anywhere near a catchy enough chorus to be memorable however it's very engaging and as i've said this a few times before and i think this is a good prime example if you think of if you imagine a scale of the catchiest song you can imagine uh you're going into truly irritating territory you know that sort of baby shark level of irritation um 
And that's where basically it's so catchy because it's devoid of any quality. It's just something which is a short, sharp earworm caused, you know, this is simply designed to cause you irritation in a way that you can't forget it easily. Uh, and then you go to the other side. If you look at a chorus that's truly complicated and develops and builds and flourishes over, a, you know, a, maybe a quite an extensive chord pattern and really, you know, has a whole journey within it every time the chorus comes around, that by extension is much harder to make catchy because, you know, it's you've got a much longer thing to sing around in your head. You know, the shorter the repeat repetition is, the more catchy something usually is. I mean, that's that's not a total rule, but it's a, a pretty good guide. So when you're looking at a chorus like this, which is quite extensive and goes round through quite a long passage, um, yeah, it's not going to be as catchy. So, you know, I, I, considering they've put this forward as a single, or the record companies put this forward as a single, it does show that they don't aim towards those sort of more traditionally catchy choruses. So this is a song where it's got what I think, I think this is kind of where you get the definition of what that adult contemporary, I keep on doing the the, the hand marks today. Um, it's <laughs> it's This is a good uh, example of what the adult contemporary sound, as it's often coined as, probably is, in that its concentration is more on detail, subtlety, and a chorus that will get, un I think this will get under your skin if you choose to listen to it. It doesn't sort of beg to be listened to as a catchier song often does. And I think that's quite true. Uh, one of the reasons why catchy songs work is because they make you want to listen to them again. Whereas if you are a genuine music lover, it might be that you don't need to be encouraged to listen to a song again if you can hear the quality on first listen. And I would say this is a song that um, I personally, I, I am a sucker for catchy songs. I love catchy songs. Yeah, I, I can't deny that. Um, but I think I can see the quality in this enough that this would be a song that I would come round to. If I was in the mood for, um, I think, I mean, this is certainly a mood I get. And I, I would imagine that most people get this as well. Sometimes you want something that is just a little bit light, but you don't want something ballady. It's like you want something fairly energetic, but you just don't want to hear compression, like loud compressed sounds, like electric guitars, like distorted electric guitars and things. It's like, I'm not in the mood for rock, but I don't want something too chilled out. I want something which is just kind of, you know, pacey, but forgiving almost, you know, pacey, but uh, relaxed. Mm. It's, it's a hard one to even describe. I'm probably someone to verbalize this, vocalize this much better than me in the comments, which wouldn't therefore be vocalizing. You know what I mean? Articulate this better than me in the comments. Um, but I think there is a certain mood that often isn't catered to so much of, like I say, sort of uh, songs that are not too aggressive, but also are not too relaxed. Uh, and I think this fits well into that category. So if I was in the mood for that kind of thing, this is the sort of song I would come back to because I go, yeah, this is this is rewarding. It isn't it isn't trying to beat me around the head, and at the same time, it's not trying to lull me into a sense of sleepiness um, or over emotion. It's just kind of fun and light. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely can say this is a song that I would come back to. Although, as is often the case, if it's not catchy, you have to remember it to come back to. It's it's one that I would uh, sort of mark under maybe a, a playlist of adult contemporary songs. Songs that deserve to be listened to again, but have not pleaded enough to your earwormy sense that they might come into the forefront of your brain when you are trying to pick songs for your playlist for that day. So yeah, basically great stuff. Really enjoyed it. Uh, I think it added a little bit to what I heard on their first song, so I'm definitely interested to listen to more of these guys. Uh, really certainly are oozing quality, if nothing else. So um, I will be back to check out more of them. As always, in the comments, tell me what you think of this song, whether you like the band or not, whether you know them or not, whether you know the song or not. And um, feel free to give me more suggestions if you'd like. If there's a song that you think I should listen to next to add more to my experience of listening to this group, Babysitter. Um, and as always, if you want to get more involved in the discussion, remember that in the link description thing below, there's also all of our various social medias, including our uh, Reddit, our Discord, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and also our page where we're selling merch now. So I added a little bit to that. So, you know, if you want to find ways to support the channel, you can buy uh, one of our bizarre um, slogan y t shirts, or you can. <laughs> <laughs> or you can follow us on Patreon because the Patreon guys, after all, are the ones who are keeping this whole ship afloat. So a massive thank you to you. Massive thank you to them. Gracias for making it through to the end of the video. And hopefully I'll be seeing you soon here in Japan on another video. But for now, ciao, ciao.